Hi, I'm Sensei Luke Madden, a second degree black belt at Mad Dragon Martial Arts and a practitioner of Xing Yi Kung Fu. I'm here today with some of my fellow martial artists to show you the ins and outs of martial arts, while also showing you some tips and tricks to help defend yourself in a life or death situation. Now, let's get started. Let's go ahead and begin the first part of our self-defense. Now, one thing that I would like for everyone to keep in mind is that self-defense is a multi-step process that doesn't always end in violence. Our first step is avoidance, and that is the process of avoiding a violent incident altogether if possible. And this goes by the mentality that I can't get hit by the train if I'm not on the tracks. That is followed up by the explanation of when I go about my life, I try to go about with an awareness and avoidance of scenarios that may seem edgy or may seem dangerous. If I encounter someone that I don't really seem to think is a very safe person, a good person, then I take steps to avoid them at all costs. This also comes into play in public when we have what is called our self-defense bubble. Now the bubble is the space around our body that is our own. It is a portion of space in the universe that we call our own and we have complete ownership of what goes into it. So anyone that I do not want in my bubble is someone that I can react to if they get into my bubble. So the bubble is we take our hands and we spread them out. Right, now it is a full 360 degree circle behind, around rather, my entire body. If I have friends or family that I have trust and don't mind being in my bubble, they can be in my bubble and we can talk and have a good time. But if it's someone that I do not trust and they enter that bubble, then we have a problem. Our first, our steps from there are to either react to what is going on in the bubble or to try to create my bubble again. Part of this is also entailed in verbal responses, which means you as a person have full permission to deny anybody entrance into your bubble or into your life that you do not want. If Adam begins to advance, if he begins to enter my bubble, I have full permission to shout and say, no, stay back, stay away. You have permission to call for help, to tell somebody no. You do not have to be polite. And so in that, when these steps fail, we enter the more physical side of our self-defense. So this is the point where my bubble has been compromised, my safety has been compromised, and I have shouted and told them, no, stay back. I don't know you. You are not welcome here. From there, we move on into our next step, which is our self-defense against various forms of attack. Now, to go into our first step of self-defense, we have our first defense. We have the haymaker. Now, the haymaker is this. It is a punch. It is a very big and wide punch, and it has several parts. Adam will demonstrate. It starts here. He cocks the shoulder back, brings it around, throws it, and then nothing really happens because it is a very sloppy and easy to defend punch. A block is where I take my forearm and I strike it against his forearm. That stops the motion of the punch and allows me to follow up. From here, I can vertical punch. I can step through an elbow strike. I can palm strike. I can eye strike. I can throat strike, knee strike. Right? I can stomp or try to grind against the ankles, anything like that. Right? So I have it here. However, we need to keep in mind that where one haymaker is, another can come. So where he throws the haymaker, I block, he could throw another. And I block, and we keep doing that until a strike is landed. We keep, we keep adapting. So there, we have our haymaker. We're going to practice. One is going to throw, the other is going to block and strike. Keep in mind, if you are practicing these at home with a friend or family member, you are going to remember that when we do this, we're going to go easy with each other and we're not going to hurt each other for the sake of practice. If we have things like punching bags, training dummies, whatever, we can actually strike. But for the sake of the safety of everyone, 
we're going to throw our strike and we're going to stop several inches before we get to them. Right. So that is our haymaker defense. The second defense that we're going to learn is the bear hug. Now, keep in mind, the bear hug is not a friendly hug. A friendly hug is, you know, we're hugging. Everybody knows what hugging is. But a bear hug is this. I'm standing around minding my own business and he wraps his arms around me and starts to try to pull me, lift me, whatever I can, or whatever he's trying to do. So from here, I have to be careful because if I try to resist too much, maybe I try to stomp at his legs or something like that, if he decides to move me, I can fall off balance. So from here, we're going to focus on getting out of the bear hug. Now for this, what we're going to do is from here, we're going to take our shoulders and roll them forward. What this does is it creates a gap of air inside the arms that allows me to move. From here, so I'm gonna roll the shoulders. Now here I'm going to take one of my hands, preferably my right, I'm going to bring it up and through the hole. So now I can wave, I can see people. Now, I'm going to take my other hand and I'm going to link them. I'm not going to link my fingers, because then they can get hung up, especially if I'm sweating. I'm going to grip them side and side, and then I'm going to drop. Boom. Now, we have a stance called a horse stance. It is a very low, bended stance. But from here, he's going to get me into it again. I'm going to roll my shoulders forward, bring my arm up, link them together, and then I'm going to push. I'm going to keep my back straight, and I'm going to push and drop down. Now, if this doesn't work the first time, if he's too strong, and I'm pushing, and I'm pushing, and I'm pushing, and it's not going, keep going. Keep fighting. Keep pushing and slamming going on. That is the bear hug defense. Now, we're going to go over the hair pull defense. This is primarily, for the beginning of this exercise, is going to be focused on people with long hair. And since as you can see, I clearly have such long flowing locks. We're going to simulate this with the back of my uniform. So he's going to grab, right? That'll simulate long hair, something like that. So with this, our attacker is grabbing the back of our hair and trying to pull us, right? We're feeling that tension. They're trying to move us somewhere else that's going to cause some pain. Now here, we're going to defend with what is known as the dragon wing. Now the dragon wing, together we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and stand up straight, and we're going to make praying hands like we're praying. Right from here, we are going to bring our arm, I'm going to turn to the side, bring our arm up and around and then back into praying hands. From the front we can do that both sides. Up and around and back into praying hands. Up and around and back into praying hands. Kind of like the backstroke when you're swimming. Now with this, if he grabs my hair, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make our praying hands like, please, Mr. Bad Guy, please let me go. And then we are going to bring our arm up and around and back into praying hands. All right now, what this does is it creates what's known as a wrap, wherein I wrap around and I have control of this arm. Now, sometimes the wrap may not be complete. It may come around and stop here. That's okay because you've still got that arm. It may go into a full thing, or rather a full grip, wherein I come around and lock it up in an elbow lock. But no matter what it is, what matters is I have control of that arm. Hey guys, so Luke's done a great job of explaining what to do when you're standing and need to fight. But we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens if you find yourself on the ground. And what we're going to talk about, instead of doing, you know, choke holds or arm bars, we're going to try to get off the ground because we don't want to stay down here long. So what Adam and I are going to show you right now are the two steps, the two best ways to get off the ground and back up on your feet. So we're going to start. I'm going to be the bad guy, and Adam's going to be the good guy trying to get off the ground, okay? I may be trying to attack him or maybe try to get him in some kind of an arm bar. So the first thing that you're going to want to do in this situation is you're going to want to bridge your hips. So watch Adam real quick. He's going to bridge his hips up, all right? So you're going to do this very violently. You're going to do it real quick. And, and you may have to do that two or three times just depending on the size of your opponent. 
So the first thing he's going to do right here, so I'm, I'm in mount, I'm, he, he's in shield stance, you know, and he bridges. And that throws me off balance, okay? It may not do that the first time, but if he does that several times, and then the second thing he's going to do is he's going to place both arms on my leg. It doesn't matter which leg. Right now we're going to do it on my left leg. And he's going to turn his body so he doesn't have his back on the ground, okay? And probably I'm going to be in this, um, this position once he does uh, the bridge. But for demonstration's sake, it's going to be right here. And he's got both arms here. He's pretty well protected, okay? And he's off his back because you don't want to stay on your back long. So he's right here. And he's going to do a move that we call in jiu-jitsu a shrimp. So he's going to put his arms on my leg and push off my leg and scooch with his feet. So let me, he's going to show you that with me off of him. Okay? So it, when he's in that position, so pause right here, just freeze right there, buddy. He kind of looks like a shrimp. That's why we call it a shrimp. So he's going to turn to his side, get off his back, place his arms on my leg. He's going to push with his feet and push his hands off of my leg. It doesn't matter which leg. And then he's going to flip side to side and continue to do that on each leg until he's wiggled out. So th this is what it looks like. We're going to do it slow. All right, so he bridges, pushes me off balance. Then he gets to the side, starts shrimping. He may have to do it again on this side and shrimp again. We'll do it one more time. All right, so I'm on top. He bridges, off balance, shrimp, shrimp. So that's the bridge and the shrimp to get you back on your feet off the ground. Another thing that we like to do in martial arts is focus on storytelling. Throughout the ages and honestly millennia, martial artists have used storytelling as a way to convey lessons to other people and to students. One of these stories that is one of my personal favorites is the story of Musashi and Reikyo. Musashi was a great samurai who lived in the ancient Japanese timeline. Musashi was a master swordsman and was renowned throughout his life for his inability to lose a fight. Now in those days, a fight between samurai or other warriors was to the death, so nobody really took their challenges lightly. But seeing as Musashi was the top swordsman, everyone wanted to take his crown. So Musashi lived for many years, fighting and killing many of his opponents. And eventually, in Musashi's old age, he grew tired of all the life that he had taken and all the blood spilled. And so he became more of a, a wanderer, a traveler, someone who tried to avoid a fight when he could. But one day, a fight came to him. A young warrior by the name of Reikyo found Musashi while he was at a market. He quickly ran out with his armor and his sword and shouted, Musashi, I demand that you fight me. I demand to test my skill against yours. And Musashi said no. Well, Reikyo did not like this. It was a disgrace to his honor that he traveled so far, only to be denied by the ultimate swords swordsman. Well, he demanded further, but Musashi simply ignored him, walking away. However, a time came when Musashi decided to take what was considered to be a cruise in that time. It was a boat that would travel down a river and allowed its, its passengers to uh, relax as it went on its journey. However, while Musashi was enjoying the sights, what he didn't realize was that Reikyo was on board. Reikyo immediately ran out, shouting, Musashi, I demand that you fight me. You cannot deny me here. Musashi nodded and said, yes, I can. I can absolutely deny you. Well, Reikyo said, well, if you deny me, then I will draw my sword and I will take the life of every single person on this boat. So what will it be? Well, with that, Musashi couldn't argue. He had to accept the challenge for the sake of the passengers. But he told Reikyo that we will not do it here. We will not spill blood on the deck of the ship with all these people around. He quickly turned to the edge of the boat and pointed out to a small island. He said, over there. The island was covered in sand, simple tree, very 
uh, very classic island like no one on it. He said, there we will have our fight. Well, Reikio nodded, finally ready to kill this foe that he'd been longing so long to fight. So they gathered their armor and their swords. They put them in the boat and they rowed on. They got, as they went close to the island, Musashi rowed. Well, Reikio stood proudly on the front of the boat, ready for the moment when his destiny would be realized. They arrived on the island, and Reikyo immediately jumped off, grabbing his armor and starting to put it on. He was ready. He was, his blood was pounding. He was ready to face Musashi. But what he didn't realize after a time was that he couldn't hear Musashi moving. He couldn't hear him putting on his armor. Well, Reikyo spun around, and out in the distance was Musashi rowing away in the boat back towards the ship. Reikyo shouted to Musashi, Musashi, you said that you would fight me. How dare you dishonor your agreement? Musashi said, but we did fight. We fought with our minds, and I won. From there, Musashi rode away and lived the rest of his life, and Reikyo stayed on the island. And that is the story of Musashi and Reikyo.